Hello everyone, welcome back to this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful place to be. This is your one stop for everything that has to do with fun, faith, marriage, motherhood, lifestyle, for lovers of music, and of course, those that are interested in having a wonderful well-being and their health. This is your place to be once again. My name is Dr. MK, and um, I'm privileged to be the husband of your host, MK. So this is another time that I'm here to share with you some little, little wisdom that I have. All right. Yes. So let's get right on to this. Um, uh, so today is going to be an interesting topic. Like I said in the previous video, if you haven't watched the previous video, please do well to do so. I spoke about the five scriptural facts about sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I give you some medical backup and point. So along this video, okay, I'm going to be referencing to the previous video. So if you haven't seen that video, please do well to do so. So today, like I said in the previous video, I'm going to be talking about biblical facts on oral sex. Yes. And like I did last time, I'll try as much as possible to reduce my use of the word sex. I would use some intimacy, oral intimacy, or oral coitus, you know, oral intercourse. So things like that so that I don't really get much of, um, in quote, YouTube red flags down here. Okay, so today we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be doing um, um, interesting facts about oral intimacy. Okay, now, um, before I start, I want us to really get some things straight. <laughs> yes, that. Sexual intercourse is good. Nobody's going to change that fact. Not you, not I. It is good. It is good and one. And God loves us to have lots and lots of it. It is anything good that was created by God is meant to be enjoyed. That's number one fact you should know. I put it down. Number two fact is this. That the intercourse was made to be between a man and a woman. The Bible speaking in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, he said, and he created them male and female. So any kind of intercourse you're having that is not between a man and a woman is a sin and it is, um, it's dangerous and it is against biblical practice. Okay, so you know them, you know them. So if you have anything in your mind concerning that angle that gives you pleasure, please, you are not acting on scriptures. That is the number two fact that we should always remember while watching this series. The third thing I want you to always know is that intercourse was met, was made by God to only be had or to only be enjoyed by a married man and a married woman. The Bible was speaking in Genesis chapter 2, I think verse 24. The Bible says, and a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife right and they shall become one flesh now that one flesh there means they will come together and consummate they become one in flesh one in spiritual and body that is why you see that a married man if you notice that if you check our parents or you check other couples you find out that when they have been there with themselves for a while they begin to look like each other oh yeah it's because they have been um a transfer of 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 spirit soul and body they have, they have been the transfer, a transfer of spirit. They have been the transfer of mind. They have been the transfer of a lot of things. Okay? So it makes them want to or somehow look alike. So those three facts should always be in your mind. That whenever you're talking about anything that has to do with intercourse, it must be by, it is good. You should always know that it's good. Number two, it was, made, it was created to be enjoyed by a man and a woman and this man and woman must be married okay so those three basic facts will help you so that you you ask some few questions now if you know these three basic facts you understand that anything that is done outside the context of marriage is a sin premarital um, intercourse um dating and then having the show they're all sins they are not biblical and anybody that's practicing it is committing sin Okay, so back to the to the juice of the day. Now, is oral intercourse fine for a married couple? Um, I'm going to answer this question in three ways. 
Okay, so that I don't really beat around the bush. Now, whenever you are talking about anything that has to do with intercourse, right? There are also three things that you should always remember. Okay? The first two applies to anything in life. Any decision you want to make in life, the first two applies to it. All right? The first two apply to it. Now, this is it. Number one, the question you need to ask yourself is, does God permit it? Oh, yes. If you're about to have sex, and about to do anything in the confines of intercourse, you must ask yourself, is it permissible by God? The second question you need to ask yourself is, how do I put this? Is it beneficial to myself and to anyone around me? Yes. Apostle Paul was saying something in, um, I think, 1 Corinthians. I'll put the scripture. He said that everything is permissible to me. Everything is lawful to me. But not everything is beneficial. Yes. So if I want to engage in this act, am I hurting my partner? Am I creating an emotional trauma? Am I, am I oppressing the person? So you must answer that. And if the, 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 the person receiving such a gesture is not going to enjoy it, then it is not good. You don't even need to enjoy it. I tell you, young man, stop it. It is absolutely not scriptural. So not everything that is permissible to you is beneficial to someone. And if it's so, then it is not right. If you want to put it in the context of business, you carry a business proposal, you give to the person. Is it beneficial to the person or are you trying to dupe the person? So you see, it applies to everything. So, so, so this first two points applies to everything in life. And you must always ask yourself the question, is it permissible by God and is it beneficial to the person I'm putting it up to? And then the third thing, this one here is particularly for coitus. It is does it involve another person? The reason why I'm using these three points is so that it will make my work less um, and I have less answers. I just want to try and see how I could join in so many things into the episode so that we don't really have much of this and then the points are being gotten at once. Is it, does it involve another person? Bible speaking, he said, um, the Bible says um, that um, marriage is good with the bed undefiled. Now, if you remember in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says, A man shall leave his man, a man shall leave his father and leave his mother and cling to his wife, and they shall become one. The context of intercourse, the context of coitus union was meant to be enjoyed by just two partners. Any other third party is the same. Oh yes. So if you get what I'm saying, you would understand that pornography is the same. Because it does it doesn't really involve in fact I didn't even see it this way until a few hours ago when I was looking into this. I I I, I now and I ask myself, that means in pornography there is a third party. You have a lot of questions about pornography, right? Maybe I should just do a different video about that. I I think it's it's but just, but just get the concept, right? It involves another party. Even if the person is not physically there, but there's another party involved in that agenda. So it is not scripturally right. Okay, so those three factors would actually guide you on the basis of intercourse. Okay, so now, you might be telling me, Baba, don't, don't stop jumping, don't stop jumping, stop jumping, give us the juice. Okay, here is it. Is oral intercourse a sin? Now, the first, let me, let me answer the question with the first point. Is it permissible by God? Hmm. Although there was no scripture in the Bible that actually explicitly said, have, you do not have oral intercourse. Although there was no scripture like that. But I'm going to be bringing to you two veiled scriptures. Two scriptures that, um, in quote, they are like in a, a balloon. Okay? It didn't really say it, but you and I are going to look into the scriptures with our eyes open and then we'll see that, could it be? This is what it meant. Okay? So, is it permissible? No scriptures will answer. Is it... The second point, what did I say? What did I say? What did, is it beneficial? Yes. Is it beneficial? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It is. I could tell you that it is. 
orally to coerce is beneficial to both partners. If being done right and even if being done in the context of 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 of, of, of understanding. And then the last point, does it involve two part it must involve two partners? Yes, it must involve two partners. Three songs and um groups group intercourse is of the devil so nobody should bring that into your home okay before we go into the juice i also want to put this up that this issue of oral intercourse have actually caused some some friction in homes in other words um maybe i should have said this at the end of the video but of the video but let me just say it now I'm, uh, it's coming to me um this is it now the guy likes it the woman doesn't like it the woman doesn't like it, but the guy likes it. And then they begin to quarrel. Ah, I like it, but you're not giving it to me. Ah, no. If you want it, discuss about it. Let Know why the other person doesn't like it. Know why this person likes it. If you're in the context that maybe your wife likes it, but she doesn't like it, maybe you might just come to that compromise and be cool with it. Man, let me just give it to her. Because studies have shown that um, over 45% of men enjoy giving their wives oral sex because they, 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 they derive pleasure in it. it. They don't really get pleasure in giving, they, they, they don't have the pleasure per se for themselves, but they have this sense of satisfaction that their woman is being pleased. And then they give it, come on, every man in the, every man in the house would want to see his wife happy, right? That is your, that is your, that is the end game of you being a man. That is, that is the end game of, being, of you being a married man. You want to always have the wife happy. So if you're in that context, hey, you could just make do with that. So what I'm, just, what I'm just trying to say is there must be a communication. Don't just think, oh, you should know now. Oh, she should know. She should give me some because I'm giving. No, you must ask, does she like to reciprocate the favor? Is it her thing? Is it what she likes doing? Because you're, you're not going to force her to do it because you like it. You also have to understand from her own end why she doesn't and you have to be cool with it. She also has to understand from your own end why, why you like it and she has to be cool with it. Or if there is a way that there, must, there can be a compromise, then why not? Because in marriage, there must be, it, 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 there must be a compromise if need be. If, if you really cherish your home, I, I can remember something. I wasn't really a fan of um of draw soup. And then I married a woman who, who loves draw soup. And well I I why am I so well, like God forgive me. But I think while I, while I was a child, I can remember maybe if there were a hundred times my own mom served me draw soup. I think maybe like two times I would take it. And those two times were out of duress. But yeah, I married a wife who one of her favorite soup is is um draw soup. Draw soup is um okra soup. Because it's her wonderful soup and she likes it. It won't kill me. I will not die. I will not have an allergic reaction and die. If I had an allergy to it, then that's different. But this one, I didn't just like it because I didn't just like it. But because she likes it, I had to embrace it. In return, I love melon soup. She, she hated melon soup. I love stew. Well... She didn't really like stew, but hands have turned. I like it. She didn't like it. But because I like it, she has to like it. So I like I loved stew. She really was not, was not a fan of stew. But because I liked it, she had to like it. She had to cook it. She had to enjoy. So you see, these are compromises that you can make in your home. In order to make things work, in order to make each other happy, in order to complement yourself. Marriage is not okay. This has turned to a marriage class. No, no, no. This is not a marriage class. This is an intercourse class. So let's get back. Okay. So yes. So let's let's look at those. Let's look at that scripture. Let's look at the first scripture, and then we're going to um we're going to discuss together, right? I, I saw it and it blew my mind. <laughs> it blew my mind. I, I want to show you. Um, in um, let's see, let's see the first one. You know where I'm going to. Which scripture would actually be that term explicit to tell us some things about sex? Which scripture? Oh, Solomon. So, Songs of Solomon, chapter 2. Um, let's see, let's see. Verse, verse 3. It says, um, Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest, 
So is my beloved. Now, this is a lady talking. One of Solomon's wives. So is a beloved among the young men. In his shade, I took great delight. And I sat down. And his fruit was sweet to my taste. Mm. His fruit was sweet to my taste. What fruit? <laughs> now, 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 this is a lady talking, right? She said his fruit was sweet to my taste. It means she tasted something. No, 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 no. Let's not go far. Something entered into her mouth and she enjoyed it. It's simple. Let me go again. Let me go again. In, in his shade. In his shade. What does that his shade mean? In his shade. I took great delight and I sat down. Oh God. I wanted to just. Okay, don't picture, but let, let, let me just let me just paint the picture for you. In his shade means under his in his groin. Right? In his groin. Something, something, something that is. That is that is that is like in the covering. So in the shade she sat down. It means she she took some lower posture to achieve this journey she's about to she's about to tell us. She said, and I and I took great delight and I sat down, and his fruit was so sweet to my taste. Some theologians would say maybe she meant that just the man's genital to come into her mouth, a cavity, her, her oral cavity, her mouth was what she derived pleasure in. Some other people will say, I think I was reading an article by a sexologist that said that what she actually meant by his fruit, because every tree, now, get this, every tree, she didn't say his tree, she didn't say his branch, she said his fruit. So in other words, something was an, the fruit was an offspring of something. So what is an offspring of a man's genital Okay. His sperm. Yes. So probably she had tasted the sperm and it was sweet to her. Eww. Oh yes. Sons of Solomon, baby. <laughs> so, so that is one built picture. So you see, that now portrays a woman giving to a man. Alright? And because there is no explicit um, 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 drawbacks on it in scripture, I could actually say that God placed that scripture there to show us that it is possible or it is permissible that oral intercourse is not a sin. Because, because um, if it was, there should have been an explicit um, um, antagonism on this. Right? There, is a, there has been an explicit antagonism on... on um, on um, sex before marriage, there have been an explicit antagonism on on um, on um, sex with someone who is not your partner. Sex outside marriage, intercourse with, you know. So there have been antagonism on the issues of sex that concern us. But yes, but this no antagonism whatsoever. So you see, the lady um, granting the man a, 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 a fellowship. Under his tent is actually Allah. Okay? So now let's I saw another one. And then I don't know why my mind just took me there. Because probably I needed to see it. Now, if if if, if you see why the, the Bible is so balanced, if that was just said for just the, the woman giving the man, I'm sure a lot of men will be like, eh, that's good now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't need to give now. I don't need to give. Because some men are very are very selfish. They want to receive. But they don't want to give. They they, 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 they don't want to give because uh, 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 you know they have oh, I can't do that. I can't go down there, you know, giving issues like uh it's so moist that the smell sometimes is not is not palatable. There are things to do to make it palatable. Oh yes. Now that's when my medical sense will come. Don't worry, I'm coming there. So so, <laughs> so don't be selfish. If if you saw that about a woman granting a man that fellowship, wait, I'll show you yours. Now, open your Bibles quickly, if you can, or I'll read for you, to Songs of Solomon chapter 4. 
Mm. Verse 14. Yeah, 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 yeah. Verse 14. Sorry, verse 16. The Bible says, Oh, now, now, Solomon's wife still speaking. Um, that's um, um, Shulamith. Shulamith. She said, She said, um, Awake not wind and come. Awake not wind and come south wind. Blow on my garden. Hmm. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Blow on my garden that its fragrance may spread everywhere. Let my beloved come into his garden and taste of its choice fruit. Now, Songs of Solomon is a poetic scripture. So, you must be looking for something and find to find it there. So, in my mind, to look for something to back this up, because I know that definitely there is. This scripture then pops up. Blow on my garden. Let its fragrance spread everywhere. Blow on my garden. Blow on my garden. What garden? Ooh la la. Man, they're talking to you, man. Brother, they're talking to you, man. Blow on her garden and let its fragrance spread everywhere. Let my beloved, young man, she's talking to you. Let my beloved come into his garden. That place is yours. That place belongs to you. You paid for it. Mm. Okay, okay. It doesn't sound like, it's like, I'm sorry, I sound, I'm making it sound like um, it, it's a property. But, well, it's yours. Enjoy every part of it. Because it is permissible. And it is beneficial. Blow into his garden and taste of its choice fruit. Of its what? So I, I think I, I think I think that should be end the end of it. I don't think there's anything more to to add there to blow. She was just talking about how the man to how the man should caress on the genitals. The act of oral intercourse is just um, both parties caressing on each other's genitals. There is a particular way to do that for a man, and there's a particular way to do that for a woman. The man's own is quite easy. It's a straightforward thing. The woman's own. Um, anatomically, now let me bring some medicine there. Anatomically, there is um, the same thing that the tip of the man's genital, the, the tip of the man's genital is called the, as what we call the glans penis. So it's very sensitive, you know. So that's when it's basically when blood rushes there, that is where the whole sensor is, right? Now the woman, God has blessed the woman with something of sort. In fact, it's called the clitoris, right? In fact, it's it's it, it's a it's it's a small ball at the apex of the vulva. Yes. Now, medically, we know that the clitoris has over eight thousand nerve endings. Over eight thousand. So it means it is more sensitive than that of a man's genital. So okay. So now, would Solomon's wife now be? It doesn't now make sense. A taste of his so you see how the way the clitoris looks it looks like a fruit like a ball so so now that's why that's why i said these scriptures are like in a balloon it's kind of veiled so it, it is just me um i'm putting more light on it to make you understand that these things have been there and since there are no scriptural antagonism on it they are permissible and looking at it theoret theoretically, you find out that there is no, um, there is nothing wrong. And look at it from the light of scripture. These things are right. Okay. Now, now, what are what are the things? What are the? And uh, 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 why this topic is actually important is this. You know, for for we believers, we are we are guided by a lot of morals, a lot of morals that makes. Um, us to make some decisions based on scripture, which is perfect, which is wonderful. So you see things like this, since they are not expi expli explicitly written in scriptures out for us to follow, we may we may hurriedly take it as not permissible. The act doesn't look holy, in quote, you know, it doesn't look holy. And uh, so that's why such, uh, such a video, I, I'm, I'm prompted to make such videos like this to help you know, 
old and young couples to understand that um, these things is good. And it's, it's nice. It's a wonderful feeling. It's a wonderful agenda to add to your intercourse life, to your coitus life. It's, it is a way to spice up your relationship. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's some time you may be tired to engage in the, in the rigorous you know, um, journey. You can decide to take a slowdown. And then this is a way to slow down. So these things are, they are just, they are just there for our enjoyment. So because of our morality as Christians or as believers, we are, we are tempted to make this look as if it's, it's, it's from Babel, you know. But however, the non-believers, since they are not guided by any morals, they could just, anything goes. So that's why you don't really see them debate about this. So this is just to debunk any negative debate or any negative topic that has come to speak against this by the scriptures. And, and I'm telling you, you will not go to hell by engaging by both of you, both man and woman, married and married, to engage in oral intercourse. So let me just wrap this video up. What are the things that could make um, um, both parties decide that ah, I don't like it? Probably before you have that discussion, maybe you should go and shave. Man and woman, yeah, shave. As a lady or as a man, if you feel that down there, Sorry, this is now me talking to the ladies. If you feel that he doesn't want to come down there because um, the other is the other is offensive, there is a pastry that we call um is it fem family 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 yeah it it dissolves fast and it gives you a wonderful smell out. So if you're not comfortable with your smell, man, man, maybe maybe that you, you should work you should work with that and um, also. To keep good hygiene because hygiene also is paramount. You know, poor hygiene can make you have things like um, bacterial vaginosis. You know, making making down there smell like a like crayfish. <laughs> you know, you know. So if you have that, I'm not I'm not laughing at you. I'm, I'm being professional here. You can seek a medical advice so that you can get that treated, and then let that place just reveal the glory of God and the and the and the and the glory of God. Hallelujah. You know. So 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 just keep clean and then add things up to spice up that environment and then who knows he might just come knocking she might just come knocking amen so that is that and then you want to know the benefit of overall intercourse refer to my previous video it's going to be the same benefit of sexual intercourse anything that has to do with ejaculation and then reaching your reaching your, your climax is um would have almost the same benefits you know and um, anything that has to do with intercourse, remember, like I gave you an instance, I said one of the benefits of, um, of sexual intercourse is um, it generates bond. And I gave you that instance, I said there's one, there's one, and there's one hormone called oxytocin. You know, it, it, it creates, um, it creates um, a bond between both parties. By the time the man has climbed, by the time the woman has climbed, both parties release oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone. It's, we call it the love hormone. So it sparks up your intimacy life, makes you to become one together. Now, does that does it now make sense? Bible says, a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And then there is a hormone called the love hormone that when you are in fellowship, it be, it's being released, and it now creates intimacy. It creates bond. And that is one flesh. <laughs> oh, science will not give me. Science will not give me. So, so that's, that's, that's basically it. And then I, I believe I've been able to do justice to this much dreaded topic about um, oral intercourse and oral coitus. So it's good. It's permissible. It's enjoyable. And it should just be between a married man and a married woman. All right? So... I believe with these few points of mine, I've been able to convince you that this wonderful journey of um uh, uh, of this act is, is is will not take you to hell. It's not from Babel, and um, it's of it's of God. Okay, and um, um I believe that I've, I've I've been able to help one or two couple out there to um, spice up their their the sexual life. Um, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel ashamed of learning new things or doing new things. Like I said, discuss with your partner. These are things that would, you know, make your marriages, you know, enjoy more flavor, more vibe, more energy. You know, you can't, you can't get tired of each other easily. As in, in, in normal sense, except your village people are worrying. <laughs> but, but forget about what I just said. But ideally, 
you shouldn't this are the, these are the things that, that that create a bond and makes you guys fond of each other that you will always crave to see her naked to see him naked and um, to just enjoy yourself okay so i believe i've been able to help and um, um i want to ask for your permission i won't be on your screen for the next two weeks um i have some things to sort out personal things to sort out but we're, we're going to continue the series and then uh, i think i should talk about um i think i should talk about the pornography in a married home yes is pornography right for a married couple i i gave you a hint already but i'm just going to um, elaborate more on our next video okay it's pornography good for my couple all right so till i come your way next time thank you thank you thank you thank you so much i want to once again thank all our subscribers who has gotten us up to 1000 we love you i love you and i always want to see you here with us so till i come your way next time remain blessed god bless you and everything that you do cheers